name is Dylan Luber. Uh, I'm 27 years old. I grew up in Malaga, Washington. Grew up in Wenatchee my whole life. My parents, Jan and Fern Luber, they have a family farm out in Malaga, uh, about 70 acres, consisting mostly of cherries, apples, and pears. Growing up, didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do, but these last few years, having working with the Stemilk growers as a field man, it's kind of opened my eyes and I've learned that there's a lot of opportunity out there, even though we are small. Um, you know, the big boys, a lot of acreage has its bigger problems. The smaller growers, smaller acreage, you know, there's times you kind of feel like a fly on the back of an elephant, but uh, it also doesn't come with a whole lot of more problems. I got two older sisters and uh, they were, shoot, I mean, we got an old block of cherries where we learned to change hand lines, uh, but over the course of the years, you know, we kind of got graduated to riding the four-wheelers and, of course, the tractors. Um, I mean, to this day, I, both my sisters can back up a trailer better than some of my guy friends, which is great. The industry is pretty scary. There's, you really got to be site-specific with what you're growing and how you're growing it. Behind the economics of it all, I mean, you really need to ask yourself, okay, what's it costing me to produce that one bin? Um, you know, from bud to bin, you know, these blocks with producing, you know, they say 100 bins to the acre. Well, their overhead is going to be spread out a lot thinner than what we can with 50 bins to the acre, of course. I mean, that's basically fourth grade math. But over the years, you know, you just kind of grew up with it. You got a really good taste of dealing with workers and crews and different job tasks. Uh, some of the jobs suck, but uh, looking back, I think it really molded me into the character who I am today, and I'm really proud to be part of this industry, and I feel like I can play a pretty strong role and uh, do a good job at it. The thing that I like the most was definitely out of all the harvests, uh, cherry harvest. I like cherry harvest the best. Uh, can kind of turn into a zoo quickly. Until just a few years ago, you know, we still were dumping boxes, uh, swamping per se, and then finally we started working with crews and paying by the bucket and uh, eliminated all of the swamping, dumping the boxes, you know, it eliminated a, a dump for bruising and you got to see all of everything they were dumping, you know, so kind of takes the cheaters out of the equation. Uh, out in Malaga, I mean, we're not farming flat ground, it's more steep four-wheel drive territory and you know a lot of inefficiencies with tractors and turning and uh, where you go down to Matawar the basin and it's you know it's flat you can farm cheap down there and it's safer and it's makes a lot more sense on paper but Malaga does have a good growing region especially for cherries I mean we got this huge mountain around the back of us that Basically, it really holds some of the rain clouds at times where they might kind of drift over to the northern part of like East Wenatchee and kind of hit that ridge a lot harder than what, where it hits us from time to time. But actually cherries, it's, it's steep enough, you know, you can only really run the tractors through a couple of times if you're going to blow. And so you kind of rely on a helicopter more times than none. And that's not cheap. So moving forward, uh, some of the areas we really need to focus on and our personal operation is basically labor. Everybody is fighting labor um, and you know this risk factor of, of freezing out, you know, rain, if you're gonna grow cherries where we are, you really need to you really need to cut that risk back and uh, a lot of our densities in our cherry orchards are you know mostly 18 by 12 and of course 20 by 20 but you know if you get some more 6 by 14 in the ground I mean that's 518 trees to the acre and that's you know you're pushing almost 8 tons to the acre and you only got to grow 30 pounds to the tree then again those 30 pounds of cherries are going to be big cherries so from a market standpoint you need to protect yourself with big fruit you need to have attractive looking orchards for pickers. So looking outside of our farm that has benefited me is uh, watching other larger growers do what they do and how they do it. Um, 
it's very crucial right now uh, planting so many trees per acre and all this trellis is expensive you need to look down the road and ask yourself the question okay if I grow this apple um, you know there's probably going to be different sports of that apple down the road where it's going to be better color um, with that better color well you know sh should I put in a trellis every other pole with a higher pole that I can possibly do a netting of some sort um, you know, you need to put in a root stock. You know, maybe down the road you might want to top work that block to something different. Um, rather than, you know, pull the whole darn thing out and start over. You, you can't afford that. It, that doesn't exist. I mean, of course, my pockets aren't that deep, so. <laughs> um, but those are, those are definitely things we're looking at and, um, and myself that I'm looking at. How can I do this and what makes sense and what makes sense for me and what makes sense for our farm?